I suggest today we all stand up and maybe dance a little because it's cold. We're going to start with our first Christmas carol of the season. But he said he has to hear it. God rest you, merry gentlemen, which has the whole gospel in it, which I love it. If any of you all have any special requests for the holidays, it's not loud enough. It's not loud enough. If any of you have any special requests for uh, the Christmas season of songs, just uh, text me, call me. Talk to Harold. Hello, hello, hello. Is that better? It's better. What's that? John Jacob, people behind the Summer, summer. Testing, 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 testing. testing. With mine? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. 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 Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ the Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Bethlehem in Israel, this blessed babe was born, and laid within a manger upon this blessed morn. The witch's mother Mary did nothing take in scorn. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. To the Lord sing praise, all you within this place, and with true love and brotherhood each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas, all lovers of deface, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort and joy. I can't imagine um, Jesus, you know, he was there at creation. All three of them were there. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit were there at creation. And I can't imagine 6,000 years later when it was time for Jesus to come, knowing what he was going to suffer. And when God said, let's roll, he just did it. And he came to a, time, a place where it was dirty and nothing like we would have thought a king would have been, but that's how he saved us. Why would I worry when giants are calling my name? My God is so much bigger than the troubles I face. Why would I hunger for power or riches or fame? My God is so much Shaken, I won't be moved. My God is faithful, His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains, Oh, it's time to move. My 
God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle is done. My God is stronger, the victory has already won. Died for my ransom and rose up on the third day. My God is greater than death, hell and the grave. Amen to that. I won't be shaken. I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains. Oh, it's time to move. My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. There's no mountain too high. No valley too low, there's no fear that I have, because I'm already known. There's no problem too big, there's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. There's no mountain too high, no valley too low. There's no fear that I have, because I'm already known. There's no problem too big, there's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's, that's impossible. impossible. I won't be shaken. I won't be moved. My God is faithful. His promise is true. So I speak to the mountains. Oh, it's time to move. My God is bigger, better, stronger, greater, bigger, better, stronger, greater, bigger, better, stronger, greater than you. I don't know if any of you have any big looming mountains right now, but um, what does God say about today? He says, today is the day, and today has enough troubles of its own, right? So all we need to do is cast our cares upon him for today's troubles. That's all we need to worry about. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. And how cold my husband is, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need a hand warmer. I can't yeah. feel the pick. <laughs> Leaving my past behind, observing my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. Today is the day you have made. So much more, 
knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day I've made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I'll live for you. And all my days I'll live for you. And I will stand upon your truth. I will stand upon your truth. And all my days I'll live for you. And all my days I'll live. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I will worry about tomorrow. I'm giving you my fears and sorrows. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day. Oh, oh, oh. Today is the day. Oh, oh, oh. Today is the day, oh, 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 today is the day. Sing a song, a 
song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song. So declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King, sing to the King. We worship. Okay, so welcome to huh? Oh. Welcome to Step Closer. There you go. Okay. Welcome to Step Closer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, before we get started, how, how many newcomers are here today? Anybody here for the first time? So we don't need to do announcements. We'll get right to the speaker. No, sorry, I'm getting I'm getting that look. Okay, so it, does anybody have a questions about our announcements? Okay, I'm gonna run right through it real quick. Anyway, anyway, y'all, y'all know on Friday nights they have the AA meeting right over here, uh, six o'clock, and then following that they have R and R, where a lot of you all are sitting here because of R and R and that AA meeting. And then, and then on Tuesday night, where's Gavin? There he is. Gavin and Bruce do a. Uh, and Dave. Oh, oh, and Dave. And sorry, Dave, didn't recognize him. And Dave do a, a co-ed. Uh, life recovery Bible and and I don't know about you all but I'm getting tired of zoom I'm ready to meet in person but anyway that's all they have right now so you got to go do your cyber technical skills and 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 zoom on in and then on Thursday night where's where's uh pastor Andy at or retired pastor Andy there he is recovering pastor, recovering pastor. <laughs> okay <laughs> <Yeah. Get it. laughs> all right all right and then and then uh and then on Sunday Wait, I'm sorry. That's on Thursday nights at 6:30, Pastor Andy, and that too is not in person. You got to use your technical skills and zoom on in, on Andy. Okay, and then uh, and then today, uh, if you need a shower, they're going to be open from four to six. You can step outside. And, of the and, and, and after after you get cleaned up, we have supper for you. And I believe where's Pam at? I don't see Pam. But anyway. If anybody needs that, come see me or Bruce afterwards, and then we'll take care of you. And if you all see that comic on the back, you know, when I said any newcomers, this is, we all need to illuminate, you know, come on. So we need to invite somebody, even if it's Santa Claus. I mean, anyway, okay. Uh, let me pray real quick. For, I know it's wet, but we have our offering box over there by the coffee. If anybody feels incremented to give to the offering. And let me pray real quick for it, real quick. Father God, bless bless the money that keeps this ministry rolling and running smooth. And and just bless the stewards that acclimate or allocate the money and, and where it needs to go. In your son's precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we have uh what's the big church thing? I'm it's a it's joy to the world. You you give to the Paul, I'm gonna need some help here. I'm stumbling, but doing, great. doing good. Okay, all right. But I guess you fill out some stuff over by the Christmas tree, and you donate to the ministries around the world. And and at this time, you know, it's hard on everybody. But if you feel in again, oh, and I'm sorry, 
And if you feel recommended to pray, Virginia has uh, uh, prayer cards and a pencil. If you all want to pray, or a prayer request, I'm sorry, a prayer request. And then fill it out, keep it dry as possible, and stick it in the offering uh, cashier box, or, or not the cashier box, the offering box. Sorry, sorry. Jeez, okay. All right. Um, other, this, this water is slowly but surely inclimating its way inside here, so inclimating. <laughs> anyway, without with, without further ado, we got a special guest today, and I told him we got a rough crowd, so you guys be tough on him. And I, I guess I guess they're going to put your time of the marathon on the new playground. I mean, anyway, but before we at, invite Pastor Paul up to give us our message, uh, we're going to have Kelly come on up. Kelly, come on up and uh, read the scripture, please. Give, give it up to Kelly. Oh. And then you introduce Pastor Paul. I could spit once. Yeah. Okay, we're in a, I'm going to read Romans 6 1 to 6 14. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Huh? I thought it was, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right um, up there. you go. What was that here? Uh, do you know, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in that order, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. We, too, might walk in newness of life. For if we, have been un if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a, res in a resurrection like this. Wow, that's cool. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now... If we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But for the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as an instrument for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for his righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, I'm supposed to introduce somebody, but I can't remember his name. Oh. Pastor Paul! <laughs> That's the best introduction ever. I love it. <laughs> hey, y'all. It's good to be here. Really good to see you. Well, well done for making it out in the uh, cold and rain. I mean, I had to be here, but you guys, uh, you guys chose. So nice work. Uh, it's a nice cold day, but yeah, we're going to have some fun. Uh, I want to start off by thinking about um, action movies, all right? Can I raise this up a little bit? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I can. All right, how's that? Is that a little better? Yeah. You hear me good? All right, nice. Um, all right, so action movies, right? How many people like action movies? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So there's always this scene in the action movie, and I want us to like get our mind. I'm not, I don't have a particular movie in mind but I've got this scene that seems to always happen and I want us to think about this scene it's where um, you know the good guy is like a really good person right and the bad guy is a really bad person right 
And there's often a scene where the bad guy and the good guy are in the same room, right? And the good guy has the, like, has the opportunity to do you know what, right? Like, get rid of the bad guy. But he's such a good guy that he doesn't, right? So here's what I want to ask you. In that scene where, where, where the good guy like has the gun, he's, like, what do you want him to do as the viewer? You want him to kill him, right? Kill him now. Like you're tired of him being the good guy. In this case, let's be done with it, right? And we can all go home and the movie's over, right? That's what you want. Now, the question is why? Why do you want the good guy to kill the bad guy? He's so evil. Yeah. All right, that sounds complicated, but thank you. <laughs> all right, yeah, rough crowd, I can take it. Um, all right, so why do you want the good guy to kill the bad guy? Because it's so evil, why else? Yeah. So the bad guy can't commit any more evil acts. So the bad guy can't commit any evil acts, right? He's going to do more. He's going to do more. <laughs> Justice. Yeah, anything else? Meet the maker. <laughs> Retribution. So I think we want the bad guy to die because when the bad guy dies, it's over, right? The struggle is over. All the conflict in the movie, all the trouble, all the bad things that the bad guy is going to do, it, it's just over. And, and of course, the good guy is so good that he... Like, gives the bad guy another chance, and the bad guy goes out and does a bunch of bad stuff, right? And we have to watch two hours of it, but we pay to do it, and it's fun. And then finally, usually, the good guy wins. Unless it's a really weird, artsy movie. <laughs> and then the bad guy wins, and we leave feeling like we wasted money, right? So, that's the idea, though, that I want us to think about. Because this is, I think, what the Apostle Paul is getting at in this passage. When the bad guy dies, it's over. The struggle's over. And that's what he wants us to understand because, as we're going to see, when we've believed in the gospel, when we've believed in Jesus Christ, the bad guy has died. That's the main idea here. So, um... We're going to walk through this passage a little bit and talk about some of the details. Um, the main point here that Paul wants us to get is that sin has no more hold over us. Sin has no more hold over us. Amen. Now, we can say that and we can affirm that, but how many of us feel like we experience that? every minute of every day not a lot right a little bit because I, I mean we say amen we say we know this we say we believe this but but there's something there's some kind of disconnect yeah julie i like that idea you like the idea yeah <laughs> okay but then there's the reality of temptation yes Yes. And that doesn't seem to disappear just because I've been made new in Christ. Right. So it's, it's as, as you said with Phil, it is complicated. Yeah. So, so that's the tension of this passage, is that we, we are being told something in this passage that is absolutely true. <clears throat> and yet, when we ask whether we experience it in our lives, it's kind of a, well... It's complicated, right? And so that's the tension we want to dive into, is to how do we make this truth that the scripture is telling us that the bad guy is dead, how do we make that truth reality in our lives? How do we walk in that? So the passage begins with a question. Um, this is a logical question because uh, you probably looked at this last week, but Romans 6 um, has this. 
Let me get to Romans here. Where's Romans? Old Testament, is that right? <laughs> right after Genesis? I'm, I'm getting lost here. All right, Romans 5.20 says this. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So Paul says something simple. When there's more sin, there's more grace, right? Mass on a Sunday morning. More sin, more grace. So the logical question is, well, we like grace, right? We want lots of grace. So if we want lots of grace, let's sin more so there's more grace, right? Math makes sense. So, but this is what Paul asked, Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? Should we sin more? Now, the, the problem with this question is there's a fundamental <coughs> misunderstanding about sin in this question. What is that? What's wrong with this question? Yeah, Phil. We always have sin. We always have too much. If we seek to have more, it's not going to increase grace. Yeah, that's a good point. So we're, we're always in sin, and so it's not as if doing more actually creates more grace. That's, that, that's absolutely true. What about sin, though, does this question misunderstand? Yeah, Bruce. Sin leads to death. Yeah, sin is death. The, 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 the assumption behind this question is that we that we like to sin, that sin is somehow good, that if we could, we could get away with sin, so that we'd like to do more, but that actually there's something preventing us. So if we can have more grace, we can have more sin. The assumption is that sin is actually a good thing or something worthwhile. But if we understand that sin is death, why would we do more of it? Why would we want to do more? So that's the fundamental question here. Yeah, Julie. So if sin leads to death, shall I wait? Okay, if sin leads to death, how does grace solve the problem of death? Does grace solve death? Or does death continue to exist while grace exists? Yeah, so the question is, if sin leads to death, how does grace solve the problem of death? Does it? Yeah, well, we're going to see, actually. That's a great segue. So let's, let's go to the next part. Um, okay, so Paul answers, first of all, no, that doesn't make sense. And then he has this, um, he defends it by saying, by going back to the idea that we began with. So this is the second verse, Romans 6, 2. He says, by no means... How can we who died to sin still live in it? And this is where Paul is introducing these two big ideas that form the heart of this section. Death and life. Death and life. And as we read this passage over and over again, we're going to see those words. Death and life. Death and life. And so he says, how can we, if we've died to sin... How is it even possible that we can live in it? The point he's making here is what I started with. The bad guy has died. Sin has died. There is no, you can't continue in sin so the grace may increase because the bad guy has died. If we've died to sin, how can we keep doing more? And that kind of makes sense. I see some confused faces because we know we, we can, right? I mean, he's saying something, but then we know our experience. So Paul goes on and he gives three things here. This is, the, this is really, I think, the, one of the paradoxes of the Christian life. You guys know what a paradox is, right? Paradox is like two things that are true, like military intelligence, right? Like two things that are both true, but they don't seem to go together. And you can't figure out how they're both true at the same time. And so the paradox is that we are dead to sin. And yet, when we look at our lives, we experience sin. And especially as you're just learning to walk with Christ, this issue is huge. 
how do we figure out what it looks like to be a Christian and to battle sin in our lives? Uh, I've shared before in this group and on r and r kind of some, some struggles I've had early on in my Christian walk. Um, and this was really the question that, that haunted me in college. Uh, in college in particular, I was struggling a lot with, with pornography. And I just, I felt so strongly this paradox that at the one hand, I would go to church and I was involved and I was a leader. On the other hand, I, I had this sinful part of my life that I couldn't seem to get rid of. It didn't seem like the bad guy had died when I looked at my life. And I just struggled to figure out how do you make sense of that? And the passage here that Paul is gonna give us is, is, is an effort to do that, to help us make sense of that. So what Paul does is he gives us two things we need to know and one thing we need to do. Two things we need to know and one thing we need to do. That's what he gives us in this passage. So let's start off. And they all have to do with this death and life. The big themes of death and life. Yeah, Jim. What, what does it mean when you say we're dead to sin? Yeah. Can you amplify that a little bit? I don't, oh, I don't yeah, know the question to, is, what does it mean to say that we're dead to sin? What, that, what does that entail? That what does that entail? I mean... It's a great question. What, what does Paul mean when he says that? It is really what you're asking. He says, how can we who've died to sin, what does it mean that we've died to sin? I'll throw that back out there to all of you guys. What, what, what do you think? What does Paul mean by that? Yeah, over, over here. That it doesn't have to be our master anymore, that we are no longer its slave. Yeah. Yeah, that it doesn't have to be our master. Paul will use that kind of language later on, that we are no longer enslaved to sin. So there's a sense that sin, that we have to sin before, and now that's not true. That there's not an obligation to sin, that's, that's, that's part of it, yeah. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, uh, the first thought that came to my mind was repent. You know, when I, when I get in that situation, I have a, a father who I can call to and say no 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 i don't want to do this so repent you know i can kill that sin but yet i still sin yeah yeah very yeah yeah it's a mysterious <laughs> gate one, one one more answer and then we'll move on <clears throat> um so where before we were on our own against the temptations of our life now if we've accepted christ we have help so mm -hmm. we don't have to give in to our weakness, but we can rely on the Lord to give us the strength to either stand under it, move away from it. Um, we're free, like she said, we're not slaves anymore yeah. to doing what we've always done in the past. Yeah, we have the option. We have new options available to us. I think that's exactly right. I think I think Paul starts to answer that question as he goes on. So, so, so let's look. And um, in this passage, he kind of... Uh, he kind of circles around these themes, so I'm going to break it down into two big ideas. Um, but it's not exact; it doesn't exactly follow his structure because he kind of comes back to these ideas in different ways. But we're going to start off by talking. Remember, I said there's two things you need to know and one thing you need to do. And the first thing you need to know is this idea that we started with: that we are, that we have died, that we have died to sin. So. The first image he uses to talk about that is baptism. Let me read again Romans 6, uh, 3 through 5. He says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Amen. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Now, we're going to get to that life part in a second. We're focusing on the death here. So listen to this, verse 5. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So this is really important because, you know, when you first believe in Jesus, the message that you often hear is that Jesus died for you so that you don't have to die, right? Isn't that how we hear the gospel? Jesus died in our place. 
But now, what Paul is saying is that on some level, when we believe in Jesus, it's not just that Jesus died in our place, but our faith in the gospel means that we die with him. So Jesus isn't just dying in our place. There's some way that we are united with Jesus in his death. Hold on one second. So I tell people this when I baptize them, and this is why baptism is such an incredibly powerful image. And if any of you haven't been baptized, um, talk to Bruce. It is just such a strong visual experience of the truth that Paul is proclaiming here. I tell people when I baptize them, here's what's going to happen. We're going to be in the water together. I'm going to put you under the water. And if I stop there, <laughs> you're dead. Right? We can't live underwater. So I tell people, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dunk you under the water, and if all goes well, I'll bring you back out of the water. <laughs> and I say that kind of jokingly, but that's why baptism is so powerful. Because you are being put in a state of death. And that's the imagery that baptism is meant to convey. When you go under that water, apart from, if that's the end of the story, you're dead. And so that's what Paul is saying here. We are baptized into the death of Jesus. There is a sense in which we are united. We, part of us dies. And I think that's the answer to your question, Jim. And, you know, there are people who will try to explain exactly, you know, you have three parts and, and one part dies, but the other part lives, or, or you have two parts and one part dies, or, you know, there's all sorts of ways to explain it. I, I think basically it's a mystery. But what Paul is saying is that some part of us, when we believe in Jesus, dies with Christ. Call it the old man, call it the flesh, call it the sinful self. There's all sorts of different ways Paul talks about it, but there is some part of us that actually ceases to have any influence in our lives. Okay, well, let's respond to that a little bit. Uh, I was baptized by Andy. Remember that? <laughs> anyway. I, I, I you Did he bring yeah, you up? He, I mean, he brought uh, me back. Did it work? Yeah, he worked, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and the one quote he said, I remember a long, long time ago, that bapti baptism is the outward demonstration of uh, inward transformation. Yeah. And so it's kind of like that recovery and renewal, the renewing of my mind, the renewing of my body, and, yep. the, and, and my soul. Yeah. Yeah. Baptism is, it's an outward demonstration. It's a physical demonstration of the fact that something spiritually has happened to you. Some part of you has died. That's why you go under the water, right? So this is the first thing we need to know, that we need to understand that some part of our lives, when we profess faith in Jesus, something happens in that moment. Something spiritually happens. And there's, there's a bunch of ways to talk about it. And if you talk about you know, different denominations, they all have their method of what exactly happens. People are trying to describe it exactly. And it's something mysterious. That's why I think God gave us an image, a metaphor, because it's we can't quite understand what happens but something dies in that moment sin doesn't have the power that it had over us before all right how am i doing on time now i gotta speed up here well that's the second part so i think that's the life that comes phil let's move on i gotta run i'm uh I'm, I'm getting i'm slowing down here all right so that's the first thing you need to know you've been baptized into death second thing you need to know romans 6 8 all right. Why does my Bible keep turning over here? We know that our old self, oh, sorry, that's verse six. Here we go. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. So the second part we need to know is that we are raised to a new life. Again, the baptism imagery. You go down under the water where you are functionally dead and then what happens? You come back up and you are raised to new life. Now, 
and the thing I love about this, I mean, it's a little bit graphic, but if you've ever seen a baby being born, they're dripping wet, right? And they come up. And if you've ever seen a baptism come up, the water, I mean, it's, it's visceral. It's like graphic. It's a birth. It's a death and it's a birth. And so that second thing you need to know is when you believe in Jesus, something died, but something else came to life. And that's what we're talking about. That, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells us. And the Spirit is there. There's also the sense that something within us is made new. There, there, there's a new man. There's a new spirit within us. There's a new ability. There's something new. And so this is what Paul says over and over again. He talks about um, we too might walk in newness of life. Think about that. Think about like a, a toddler learning to walk in newness of life. That's what's happened with us spiritually. There is a new sense for us. So we are raised to live a new life. Now here's something really important. When we first believe in Jesus, sometimes we think that the goal of the Christian life is to stop sinning. And I know you've probably talked about this before, but the goal is not to not sin. Catch my double negatives there? If I just like go and sit in my house and somehow turn off my mind and I don't think about anything bad and I don't do anything bad, I'm not sinning, right? Let, let, let's assume, for the sake of argument, that I can get to a place where I'm going to just sit there and not sin. Have I lived into my calling as a Christian then? No. What's the goal of the Christian life? To produce fruit. Fruitful. Spread the good news. Be like Jesus. Illuminate. Yeah. All sorts of things. I mean, I, maybe love, right? I mean, you can, like, if there's one way to summarize it, it's love. Love God, love your neighbor, right? The goal is to love. Sinning prevents us from loving. So we need to stop sinning so that we can love. But the goal is not to get back to neutral. The goal is to love. And what happens when we walk in newness of life, when we are actively loving people and loving God, <clears throat> There's no time left to sin. There's no energy left to sin. The goal is to love. And so we fill our lives with the positive, with walking in newness of life. And then sin starts to fall away. If we focus on not sinning, it, it just is a mess, right? If I say, don't think about purple elephants, how well does that work? Right? See, it's in your head. You're going to go away this morning. You're going to be like, all Paul talked about was purple elephants, right? That's going to be the one thing you remember. Don't think about purple elephants. That doesn't work. If the, the goal of Christian life, don't sin, don't do this, don't do that, stop doing this, be better at not doing that. You know, if that's the goal, it just doesn't work. The goal is to walk in life. The goal is to live. Remember those big ideas, death and life. We have died. We live with Christ. So those are the two big things we need to know. We have died with Christ and we have been raised to life with Christ. The last thing Paul says is what to do. So we need to know this, but then there is something we do that makes this real in our lives. There is something that we do that, that um, participates in that. So this is how Paul says it. He says, um, so you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. That's a knowledge thing. That's a head thing, right? Consider. You must know this. You must know that you are dead to sin and alive to Christ. Those are the two things you need to know. Then in verse 12, let not therefore sin reign in your mortal bodies. Verse 13, do not present your members to sin, but present yourselves to God and your members to God. And so he says, 
Don't do this, but do these two things instead. Present yourselves to God. That's what we do. We actively, day by day, present ourselves to God, and we present our members. Our members are our bodies, our efforts, our time, our free time, our money, everything. We present our members to God. And in doing that, we live into the truth that we have been raised to a new life with Jesus. And the thing that happens is that slowly we start to see those two things, the gap between them changing. So we start to experience more the truth of what Paul is saying, that we are dead to sin and we are alive to God. It doesn't happen right away. That's what I needed to understand in college when I was wrestling with this so deeply. I, I just wanted, I wanted to hear that one sermon that like everything clicked and then I was fine. You know, that's what I wanted. <clears throat> and if you're looking for that this morning, sorry, like you're not going to get it. That's not how this works. What it wor how it works is we present ourselves to God daily, moment by moment. Uh, Doc is giving me a hard time. I, some of you may know, I posted on Facebook, I ran my first marathon last Sunday, a week ago today. So super exciting. Um, it was really fun. And the, the thing about running a marathon is that, um, you know, in the middle of it, I, you know, some people run it really fast. I ran it pretty slow for, you know, uh, but so it was about a little over four hours. And, and that's a long time to just run <laughs> and do nothing else, right? But in the middle of it, you know what I found myself thinking? I, I, I said, I, I've done this before because I'd, I'd been training for it. So I'd gone on lots of long runs and I had spent a ton of time over the past several months putting one foot in front of the other over and over and over again. So when I got to the moment where I was preparing for, Runners say, trust your training in that moment. Trust your training. Just, you've done this before. Do, just do it now. And, and that's what I felt like. And honestly, it, it wasn't, I mean, it was a lot of work, but it wasn't hard because I'd, I'd done the training. I, I knew what to do. I just keep doing it and it was fine. And that's really true in the Christian life too. That it's that presenting ourselves to God, presenting our members to God, that over time, you get to the moment where you, you want to say something to somebody and you go, I've been here before. I know that it works better if I keep my mouth shut. Right? Did uh, Dyke run with you? Did what? Did Dyke run? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dyke ran alongside me the whole time. <laughs> he was in front of me. He was pacing me. Yeah. That was a slow, that was a slow run. Yeah, Bruce. He waddled. And knowing this is one thing, but you know, it often feels like I'm like taking three steps forward. Yeah. Right. And, you know, it always feels that way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, so when I'm doing good, I know. Watch out, because, yeah. you know, yeah. anyway. Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to wait for the bike, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It, it's not as if it just keeps going up and to the right, right? And we just keep getting better and better and better. It's, it, it, it's, it's jagged and it's stumbling, but, but over time, that's why it's helpful to look back and, you know, you look back at yesterday and you think, well, nothing's happened, but you look back 10 years and you go, wow. Right, God's moved in big ways. It's a slow process. It just keeps keeps chugging along. Yeah, Bob has something to say. I say I think it's the center. What you see people who do pornography, cheat on her wives, steal. <coughs> Anyway, and that's the hard part, and don't judge him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. My name is Joe. I, I see you remember everybody's name, so remember my name. Yes, George, is that right? Joe, Joe. Joe, hey Joe. Joe. I'm new here. I have very spirit, a very spiritual question. Sure. Why people run marathons? Yeah, uh, 
You know, I hated running for my whole life, and then something changed. I don't know, some part of me died, and I started liking running. So I actually enjoyed it. I, a few years ago, that would have made no sense to me, but uh, it was actually fun. So, yeah. Yeah, you had a thought. Um, I used to get, like, discouraged if I, you know, sinned, but then for, I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit, um, I realized one time that Jesus died for all my sins, and yeah. there's not a confined period of time, like it was up until I became a Christian, and so um, that allows me to, like, just lay it at the foot of the cross and say, all right, Jesus, you've already paid for this sin. I'm sorry. And then just to get up and move again, yeah, you know, yeah, same right. kind of idea. So I know because sometimes it, there's a discouragement of, yep. oh, no, right. are you kidding me? I just lost my temper and yelled at you. You know, um, that can be really disheartening, but we don't have to be perfect. We don't Jesus have to be perfect, right. loves us anyway. You yeah. know, so. And we're always free from the penalty of sin. Exactly. We're always free from the judgment the condemnation and because of that we can stumble and we can pick ourselves up receive the holy spirit you know trust in god and and keep moving forward well um i need to wrap up because uh dyke said we need to get home to the 49ers game soon so um let me just summarize here and then i think we're going to take communion i've gone a little longer than i'm supposed to also um so this is what this is what uh Paul wants to say, remember, two things we know, one thing we do. What, 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 what are the two things we know? We've died to sin and we've raised a new life. Dead and alive, right? What's the one thing we do? Present ourselves to God. Present ourselves to God. And it's a slow moving thing day by day. One more illustration. Um, so I'm a preacher, right? I've preached a uh, thousand uh, you know, more than a thousand sermons probably, right? I mean, in the main service, I've preached several hundred. Um, so let's see, who's been here a long time? Um, Andy. Andy. So, so Andy's probably heard maybe a hundred of my sermons, hundreds of my sermons, right? I won't put Andy on the spot, but if you ask Andy, tell me about one of the sermons Paul has preached, I'll bet he'd have a hard time, right? No two things do one remember. See, he remembers this one. This is the one he remembers. So here's the thing. I've preached, I mean, people have been at this church for, for dozens of years, right? I've preached hundreds of sermons here. If you ask most of them, tell me something you remember. Gay's laughing because I know if I asked her, she'd be like, uh, like what Danny said. right? Yeah. Like you remember this one. So that could be really discouraging as a preacher, right? Like, what's the point? Nobody remembers anything. But if I asked you, you know, how many meals have you had in the past 10 years? I don't know, a lot, right? If I asked you to describe your meals, you probably wouldn't remember many of them. But if you hadn't had those meals, you'd be dead, right? So it's not about the, you know, magical sermon. It's not about the, the moment where everything changes. It's about, you know, I have to believe as a pastor, I've been feeding people. And it's not about what you remember, it's about that daily food, that daily bread, right? And so as we walk as Christians, it's not about that, that moment where everything changes, it's just about those daily steps, those daily meals, connecting to the Lord, trusting in the Holy Spirit, and, and seeing yourself grow day by day. Let me, I do remember you baptizing me. There you go, Gary remembers me baptizing you. I came up. And you came back up, it was a success. Let me pray for us uh, as we wrap up. Father God, uh, this is such a powerful image you give us here in this scripture text, um, the image of dying and to know that, that when we believe in Jesus, something, something died is freeing and it's something to celebrate. And then to know that we live with you, that we live this new life is such a gift. So thank you. Uh, help us to do what Paul encourages us to do here, to present ourselves to you, to present our members to you, and just day by day, moment by moment, see ourselves taking those slow steps towards growth as we, uh, as we learn to love and as we grow into your image. Thanks for helping us and for loving us even when we uh, don't deserve it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, we're going to enter into a short time of communion. So if you 
haven't gotten your communion MRE, please raise your hand and uh, it'll be passed to you. Okay. I'm going to read from the uh, other Paul, the, Apap the Apostle Paul, when he talks about communion. For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Um, it's interesting that uh, Paul was talking about uh, remembering things and remembering your last meal, remembering his sermon. And in communion, what we're doing is we're remembering. We're remembering the depth of Christ and what he did for us in order for what Paul just described to happen. So, um, as we take this, I want you to think about um, when you think about what Christ has done for you, what is one thing that you can think of? I mean, there's many things, but what is one thing that comes to mind that has changed since you've given your life to him and he's coming to you. So as we take communion, think about that, remember that. So we're gonna do this in a two-part uh, method. I'm gonna let you, you peel off the top, you're gonna eat your bread as you, uh, as you so desire because I love the symbolism of this. Um, you take the bread individually as we all have come to the Lord individually. But then I want you to hold the cup, and then after you've taken the bread, we'll stand and drink it together because he's called us into one body. He's called us into the church together. So we'll do that in two parts. So let me pray, and then you can take the bread. Lord, thank you for your body, which was broken for us, and your blood, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins, and that we could have new life. And we praise you for that. And we uh, thank you for that, Lord, and help us to remember that in our day-by-day -day walking as we present ourselves to you. Okay, so um, if you've taken the bread, let's stand and let's um, drink this together. And as the scripture says, for whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's drink together. Lord, thank you for your provision for us and help us to walk day by day with you and to present ourselves to you, our bodies to you, that we might live to your glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thanks, Dale. Hey, I, I forgot one important announcement, y'all. Um, January 7th, uh, you all familiar with R&R, &R, the 12th night? We're, we're starting at 12 steps, the, the heart of recovery again. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. And and that's very important. I mean, if y'all ain't doing anything, January 7th, playoffs haven't started yet, not till the second week or so. But it's very important to bring somebody to, you know, to share the message that we all... I, I don't know. A lot, a lot of us have stumbled, and a lot of us have, 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 have conquered it. But it's, it's, it's. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you're stumbling, you know, let those boulders be your stepping stones for the for the next day or so. So, but anyway, it's something to consider. And I guess we have a uh, sharing time, right? Right? Is that right? Am I doing it right? Okay. I, I feel uncomfortable because I got a jacket and long pants on, but it's me. It's me. Okay. So. Who, who's who's running the mic? And nice shoes. Okay, and, and shoes. Yeah, yeah. And I got my Nebraska socks on. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, raise your hand if you want to share. Uh, Bruce, I guess Bruce is first. Go ahead. Wait for Carlos so we can get him on the mic. Yeah, Carlos is yeah, right I'll there. wait from now on. Um, good morning, everyone. I, I wanted to. Um, let everyone know if you've never been baptized we haven't done a baptism in the recovery ministry for a while and so we want to do a baptism um sometime soon so if you haven't been baptized as an adult 
um, would like to come and see me and we'll set it up um, so please um, come and uh, talk to me if you'd like to do that thank you and Bruce will only hold you down until you seize bubbles then you're coming up so, uh, yeah, we'll bring you back down. yeah no speedos allowed okay anyway uh, Jeff Carlos right there yes I want to thank uh, one I want to thank Paul for the message and two I wanted to let you guys know I was in the hospital again. My back went out again, and it's been hurting. I don't. They're they found a pinched nerve, so they're trying to figure out how to remove it without having to do surgery. And it's been hard. I've been out of work today. I wanted to go to work, but it's raining, so I can't work on a bicycle in the rain. So this is hard. So I'm struggling. So. Any prayers, any help would be nice because it's hard to not have it to go to work when there's rain to do the things I need. Especially, I told you guys my son was going to come. His grandmother had a heart attack and he can't make it. And that makes me feel sad because I haven't seen my son in 20 years. And I was looking forward to seeing my son. And now he's not coming and it's hard. Heavenly Father, um, uh, we just come to you and lift up Jeff and cast all his cares upon you and um, let him know that um, you're taking good care of him and, um, and everything that he does and he need not worry what he um, he's, um, needs to wear or eat because um, he's literally, you're literally taking care of every need in his life. So please lift him up and... Um, Help our friend Jeff in his day to day and give you praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Right on. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Nate. Um, we still got time for maybe one more. Niners okay. don't come on until 1 30, so we have plenty of time. Good morning, uh, BBC family. Thank you, uh, Master of that Paul, for teaching. I just want to share that I believe that I. I finally come to the uh, the healing season because I've been in the wilderness for a long time and I can understand, not understand, I could understand and then feel it in my heart that there's a reason in the season for things and now I'm, I'm in the healing season and I feel good and it's, and it's good to be here. Thank you. Wow, so we can get Pastor Paul back up here then. Huh? <laughs> no? <laughs> he, he can lead us in stretching for the next marathon. <laughs> it's going to take me about that long. Anyway, you all heard that, Bruce. we got plenty of time. Anybody? Unless you all want to go out and play in the mud puddles. <laughs> We'll give it a minute. We'll give it a minute. Actually, I've got, can I make an announcement? Oh, here we go. Uh, for all the women, you cannot listen right now. So just, you know, let your minds wander. But for the men, we're having a men's retreat again. Uh, we're bringing back the BBC men's retreat, and we would love for any of you men to come join us. So it's uh, January 21st to 23rd. Uh, registration actually opens today. So I think there'll be a table on the patio, but you can also go to pbc.org slash men's retreat, um, or talk to me or talk to Bruce. Bruce might send out an email too or something, but um, we'd love for you guys to join us. We're gonna have a great speaker who used to be a pastor in Redwood City for about 25 years, Gary Gudini. Uh, we're talking about what it means to be the church. It's really going to be a great time, mostly just to be together. And, you know, it's been so long since we've gathered. So uh, there's scholarships and there's help available, uh, but we would love for you guys to join us. So feel free to ask me if you have any more questions, but you can register now. There's also an early bird registration discount if you register before December 31st. So 25 bucks off. Right. It's a good deal. Yeah. And if you mention the word pink elephant, you get a discount. Yeah. <laughs>
Hi everybody, uh, Jeff Wallach, Jeff Wallach, alcoholic, uh, child of God. Uh, this is the uh, anniversary of uh, December 12, 2002. Uh, I accepted Jesus into my heart. Carol Rivers, Carol Rivers, uh, Carol Rivers was a secretary at, at a, a Lutheran church. I don't know if you remember St. Paul's. It, uh, it was an old church on, uh, on Goff and, and I think Eddie. And it burned down. The main church burned down. But then they built up a new church. And uh, we lived across the street in a park. And, and I met Carol Rivers on the stairs. I was homeless. And I was talking about St. Jude. And she said, I don't know St. Jude. But, you know, and then she, I think she, somehow she invited me into the church a few days later. And we did this wonderful prayer and I she, I brought Jesus into my heart with her and uh, she called me on my birthday with my friend Jordan Ward uh, the other day so I, I should call Kara Rivers today. Thank you everybody. All right. Yeah. right on Jeff. Thank you Jeff. Thank you Jeff. Right on Jeff. You're illuminating. You're illuminating brother. <laughs> Go ahead Joe. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I just want to share my experience is okay we got life but life have a source. If we, uh, if I am not plugged in the source of life, I will really because uh, Paul also talk about two laws in our body. You know, uh, uh, that we, we uh, this is my experience when my prayer life, when my, you know, just studying the Bible, serving, get get colder. I really. I, I find myself sinning because this is my nature, you know, because I'm not connected to the source. So I thought it's, we are alive in Christ, but if we don't like connect with Christ, uh, our life doesn't mean nothing, you know, it just, it's not really worth living. That's what I mean. Jim, a uh, recovering addict. Um, I just wanted to, sh just wanted to uh, I was kind of reminded about all the shares this morning that the more we're getting out what's inside, the better are we are, better off we are. Um, so I was just made aware of, well, I start going into my, one of my defaults when I'm not connecting with others. And I go into battle stories, I read battle stories, you know, from various wars, but I have to say that uh, being disconnected, I ended up jumping off of a, uh, a cliff this um, summer, not, not in a suicide attempt, but I thought I was going to have fun. <laughs> but it was a result of being disconnected, that's, that's essentially how I ended up leaping off of that cliff, just from being disconnected. So that's kind of a worst case, but uh, so I encourage everyone to uh, get connected, share what's going on inside at any, at any time. You'll be a whole lot better off, and, and uh, so will others be a lot better off too. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Thank, thank you, Carlos. Um, I was just wondering if any, does anybody need some prayer that we can pray for you? Um, if no one wants to share, I think it's a good time to pray for people if they need some prayer anybody want to be prayed for anything the whole body praying for you there's nothing like it there you go i see two people right here. i wanted to praise god today and share this praise with you guys um ted was in the emergency room on tuesday he was very very sick uh, i felt afraid i, I There, there have been many, many times that he gets so sick, and I thought he would not make it through it. And I praise God that he's still there for us all the time, and my husband is recovering well, and I praise God for that. So thank you very much, and um, we would like you guys to keep us in prayers, please. Thank you very much. Pray for Virginia and Ted, everybody. Uh, Lord, thank you for our brother and sister 
Ted and Virginia. Lord, we want to lift up our brother Ted to you, who we love very much. We pray, Lord, for um, that you would sustain him through this really hard time and that um, he would keep his focus on you. Lord, we want to also pray for Virginia. Thank you for the support that she is to Ted. Lord, we pray that you would sustain her as well. Give her um, all she needs, Lord, and give Ted all he needs. Lord, help us to come alongside them where, where we can and just help them to, be, to know that they're loved by this body and by you. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, um, I, I, about a um, month and a half ago, I shared about uh, I had a very bad prostate test and I thought I had cancer. But I went to the doctor and she treated an infection and went way down, but it's still uh, high. And I took a new test this week and increased a bit. Um, still high but uh, it's not like that astronomical number before but, but um, and she seems to be encouraged that it's uh, not cancer I guess uh, she said it's stabilized but anyway I'm gonna have an MRI like next month so I'm praying that it isn't cancer and it's something that can be corrected uh, easily service here Lord we just ask you to just give him rest in his heart and, and help him to uh, have peace Lord in Jesus name I'm in the middle I'm in the middle of a storm dude and uh, going back and forth to this house for all the time it was really uh, taking his toll on me I'm just Father God, just take, touch your hands on my brother, Andreas, and whatever he's going through, Father God, let him know we're all behind him, and most importantly, Father God, you got his back, you got his back, Andreas, keep your head up, brother, and, and Father God, just, just, just heal him right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank man. you, man. Thank you. Yeah, good morning again. Um, So I got word uh, last week that my second to the oldest brother had passed away. The third to the oldest brother had passed away. And you know, it's just, as you all know, I just reconnected with my family after 60 plus years. And uh, not seeing my family, you know. Um, those kids lived a lonely life. You know, um, I was told that my brother Tony was an angry person. He was mad at my dad, mad for whatever happened, you know, all that happened. And, um, you know, it just seems like I know that, that God took him. God took all my brothers. And uh, my sister, we're still looking for her. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to share that, that, you know, there's there's times when I'm I'm happy and joyous and free, and then there's times when I hurt so bad because of you know that old saying, if only if only I had made contact with my family six years ago, I would have seen my mom, who I never seen before. All I have is pictures now. But uh, you know, life goes on. I I feel like John, you know, being uh, the only one left so survivor of the family too. To carry their life through, to to live their life uh, to their fullest and to my fullest, fullest. And so, um, I just want to thank the family I have here, especially the family I have down south, which I tend to hopefully, uh, you know, some some keep me from going down south in Southern California to see my cousins, but 
I pretty much made a commitment at the beginning of the year that I, I would go down and um, and uh, see them. So, anyways, uh, thank you for everything. Well, let's lift up David in prayer. Uh, Lord, um, thank you that David was uh, brave enough to share what's going on inside. Lord, I pray that you would um, take away any regret that he has. Um, Lord, we just pray that you would comfort him. And help him feel completely loved by you, Lord, that, that we are his family. And Lord, help us to reach out to David and, and give him the courage to reach out to us when he's hurting. And thank you that he called me the other night, Lord. Um, uh, we need to do that. When we're hurting, we need to reach out to each other. Help us to do that. Just be with our brother David and heal him where he needs to be healed. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd just like to ask you to pray for my dad. Um, he's getting to the point, he's in his 80s, and he's getting to the point where his joints are just getting trashed. Um, he's got chronic pain with his hip, his two knees, and his back. And um, What's your dad's name, Joe? His name is Larry. Larry. And um, I just pray for relief from the pain and peace and a more a greater awareness of God's presence in his life. I believe he's a believer, but I think this illness is just overshadowing him. Father God, just reach your hands over Julie's father, Larry, and whatever illness or pain she's going through, just give him comfort, Father God, and give Julie, Julie comfort that you, you are the healer and the provider, and you give us the strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, <clears throat> All right, I feel like maybe we should stick around. I mean, it looks like a lot of people are hurting, but most importantly, y'all, I mean, I've been going here, what, a little over 14 years. And David, you know, from HVRP, Ted, all the other veterans out here went through the program. Real nice, so they reach out. I mean, just reach out. I mean, we're all there with Andreas. Andreas, just reach out, brother. Even though LSU and Nebraska stink this year, we can still. <laughs> 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 all right. It, anyway, I guess the bottom line is uh, we're all family here. I mean, whether you go to the big church or you come over here, but we're all, we're all one. If, if one of us is hurting, we're all going to be hurting. And so. Just, just reach out and please, please don't ever, ever forget Amen to no that. reason for anybody to be isolated or alone in this group Amen. or in this, this Praise body. The Lord. All right. So, does anybody want to close this out? Go ahead, Carlos. Carlos, I like Carlos. Go ahead, Carlos. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father. To be, it's good to be in your house, uh, Father. And uh, we lift up all these brothers and sisters to you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. At every moment and every time we need you, Lord. Please uh, comfort our brothers and sisters. And let, give us... We always get peace, Lord. We pray for more peace. And we, we pray for, uh, for more blessings, Lord, in healing. And uh, let us be a good, uh, a good year, Lord. Let us forget about this... Uh, Pray for a good, better year than this past two years, Lord. Uh, we bless you, Lord. We love you. And we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And sending your son to us. So we, we won't be living in sin no more. And we will be with you in glory. I say this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.